Hi there, welcome to BA Consulting Pro. This is episode 17, which is the second last episode in this series of TP600 tutorial. In this module, we are going to learn about using tools to optimize performance of Power BI. That means whenever you are using Power BI, you may encounter performance issues. So what kind of tools you should use and how should you use, you are going to get to know in this video. My name is Ajay Kumar and I'm the founder of BI Consulting Pro. I work here as a founder and a mentor. If you would like to know more about me, you can pause your screen and can have a look over here. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn. In today's video, first we are going to talk about importance of performance optimization. Why should you do it? Why it is so important? Secondly, we are going to talk about optimized queries using performance analyzer. Then we are going to talk about troubleshoot DEX performance using DEX Studio. Basically, I'm going to do it at last. But before that, I'm also going to talk about optimize the data model using Tableau Editor. If you are interested in this topic, please stay tuned with me till the end of this video and I'm going to let you know everything about it. Before we start this module, if you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also share this video with your friends and colleagues. If you like this video, also thumbs up this video. Now, the very first we are going to learn what is the importance of optimizing performance. Well, improving user experience and satisfaction is the utmost priority. However, your data should be accurate. And if you are going to optimize the performance of your Power BI reports, then it's going to be very quick and responsive whenever your users are going to visualize the reports and they are going to feel happy. But make no mistake, your data should be accurate. Secondly, whenever your reports are not performing well, in that case, your users might get frustrated and also there's going to be a disconnect between the users and the development team. That's why if you really want to engage the users with your reports, they they should work faster and also they should produce accurate results. If you are really looking forward to gain the trust of your stakeholders, then also it becomes imperative that your reports are optimized. Optimization is not just the performance, it's also about using your resources optimally. This is going to help you to build a reliable and fast loading reports while building the trust with stakeholders. In this case, you should also keep in mind that your stakeholders rely on your Power BI reports for decision making. And that's what we call business intelligence, making your business intelligent enough to take the decisions. And if your data is not accurate or if your reports are not loading fast enough, then there is a gap and that gap can lead to no longer using those reports and dashboards. Now. You should also promote your user adoption. So whenever in your organization you are working and you are introducing some new tool for the reporting purposes. In this case, we are going to talk about just Power BI. So if you are looking forward to adopt Power BI throughout your organization, then this can only be possible in two ways. First, you are going to train them. You are also going to introduce with the tools and technology. But second and the most important part is when they have seamless integration as well as smooth user experience while rendering these reports and dashboards so whenever users are gonna look at the reports and dashboard they should be optimized enough so that users can render their data within seconds otherwise they would get frustrated and they are not gonna use those reports any longer in case you are still wondering that why we really need to optimize our reports and dashboards and why this process is so important then there's also another reason that's gonna improve operational efficiency efficiency optimized reports save time and resources that's why i said that this is also going to help you to optimally utilization of the resources secondly it's going to allow users to focus on the data analysis rather than waiting time for the reports and the reports are getting loaded they are getting frustrated or are just getting bored so they are no longer going to use those reports so it's really important when we talk about the scalability that means how we can load more data or how we can enhance further functionality so in this case also this plays a crucial role optimized reports can handle larger data set and can have more complex calculations in this case you have to ensure that the system grow with the organization data needs and that part also covers under the optimization itself. If your data is growing or you are getting more and more data and your reports are not performing well, then also it has negative impact. Now, 
Talking about the point number two, which is the optimized user queries using performance analyzer. If you are using Power BI, then you must know what is a performance analyzer. Performance analyzer is a tool that is going to help you to analyze the performance of your report visuals, the queries, how it's working, how it's going to go, etc. With the help of this built in tool in Microsoft Power BI Desktop app, you can start recording. And with the help of that recording, you are going to get certain numbers that have been divided into three different parts. First, when you do the change page, secondly the change a slicer and lastly the cross highlighted so what are these in this example on your screen you can see that how you are using this performance analyzer i'm also going to show you in a demo part in this example you can clearly see all those three different sections that is when you are navigating to a new report page when you are changing the slicers or when you are cross highlighting a table now I'm going to use Microsoft Documentations Lab where I'm going to show you a quick demo for using Performance Analyzer. If you have already installed Microsoft Power BI Desktop app and your report is ready, then you have to come under this Optimize tab. Over here, you are going to find this Performance Analyzer. So please click over here and you can see that Start Recording button. Before that also, you should make sure that either you are coming from a new page or over here, you can also click on Start Recording. Now you can see that it's going to start recording all the numbers. For that, you have to also refresh the visuals. If you are over here for the very first time, you won't find any number here. But let's say I'm going to start refreshing all the visuals over here. And you can see all the time taken by these visuals. Ideally, what I recommend that your report page should get load within 5 seconds or max to max 10 seconds. Try to make it like 3 to 5 seconds only. Because if more users are going to start utilizing this report, they are going to face more performance related issues. Because if you are not going to do that and more and more users are going to start utilizing this report, they may encounter performance issues. So always try to make it minimum. However, if you make any changes over here, so for example, I'm changing this slicer, you see that changed a slicer option is coming and after that the timings have been changed. And if I'm going to cross highlighting, then you are going to see the last options over here that how it's appearing, right? So these are the numbers. You should be very much careful about them. Now, once you have all the numbers and you would like to know, okay, where is the problem? So what you can do, you can simply come over here. Here you can see your query has been divided into multiple parts. First is your text query. Text query took just 14 seconds. Here visual display is 20 and other is almost one second so all these numbers are in milliseconds that's why i can say it's a one second now what is dex query dex query is basically the query that is being utilized by your calculation whatever formula you have written using dex so that is your dex query if you are seeing any of the visuals so it's also going to say uh, then this visual display is basically going to display the time taken by this visual to get load or to get all the data or display the data and other is basically how long it has to wait while other visuals are going to load the data. So that's very important. Always try to go first for the which is going to take the maximum time and use it. You can also use this copy query. You can copy it. Then you can use the Dex Studio like for example over here and I can start a new window. So I'll go over here in the Dex Studio. Here I'm going to connect with the same one. So let's connect and here you can see that this is my report that I'm using and you can paste this one. So this is basically your entire Dex query. You can run it from here and then you would get to know okay, how long it took. So if you really want to visualize those matrices, you have to go to the advanced tab and here you have to see the matrix over here. I'm going to come over there as well later on. But this is just a part where I would like to show you that what are the different options over here. You can also export it and you can also save view as and you can also turn on the timings when you click on SQL profiler it's going to open another one and here also you can use this third party tool. It's ideally not third party it's provided by Microsoft but this is the one. You can come here under options and you can also turn on certain settings for example server timings which is very important. So please do turn on all these settings and I'm going to go back now over here this is the home page. Over here, you can also click the server timings and then you may try to rerun it. So let's rerun this query, but always try to clear the cache memory and then try to rerun it. That's how you're going to do. So here you can see this is your log. These are your results. It's the history, how long it took, and these are your server timings. That means your formula engine and your storage engine, how long it's going to take. We'll come back to this, but this is the way that you can use your performance analyzer, which is over here in built by default into your Power BI Desktop app and this is going to help you out to analyze the performance of your report. After this demo, the another part is troubleshoot Dex Studio performance using Dex Studio and how we are going to do that. Although I wanted to cover this at last, but let's go with the flow now. 
Dex Studio basically is a third party tool which is going to help you out to optimize your Dex calculations or any calculations that you are performing over there. So how does it work basically? Well, whenever any user is querying the data, that means whenever you are trying to open the report and you try to analyze or do some self-service on any of the Power BI report, that means you're sending queries. And when you send queries, so Power BI has a Vertipack engine and that Vertipack engine basically helps you out to perform all the analysis. And this is happening with the column store indexes, or let's say in a way that can optimize the performance of your data analysis in a very simple language. So your data is stored in a tabular format. Then you have a formula engine. Formula engine basically performs all the calculations. Then you have a storage engine, which is going to take all the computations and it's going to use the data source. So it travels like one, two, three, four, and five steps over here. If you need a dedicated video on that, please do leave your comment in the comment section. So how it's working now? Let's suppose you are using the import mode. Only in import mode, your both engines, formula engine and storage engine comes into the scenario. If you are using just direct query, then storage engine plays no role and only formula engine is gonna work over there. I'll provide you a link in the description section where you can read more about these for uh, all these different kinds of scenarios like what is formula engine what is storage engine how does it work etc all right now moving forward to the demo part i have this dex script already you can also generate from your own please do read that what we are trying to do over here this is one of the dex query and we are trying to see that how we can optimize the calculation there we are if you will go through this text it's saying that this query defines two measures that compute profit growth over month the first is bad and the second is better and how it's bad or how it's better well these are the two measures you can see that sales measure which i'm calling it bad and there is a better as well over here and what is the difference between these two measures if you already have a dex knowledge i don't need to tell you but if someone who's just you know coming over here and new to the dex well in this one i'm using a variable however the first one i'm not using any kind of variables over here and what are variables variables basically store your values over there that i can use it later on for example here in the first variable i'm calculating what is my this month's profit and then what is my last month and here i'm simply using this divide function and dividing it over here then first what i'm doing at row level 72 i'm using just bad and when I turn this on, let me check whether I have server timings on or not. So it's on and I can also go to my queries or let me go back first. I'm just checking uh, whether I have cleared the cache or not. Now I have cleared the cache. Please do clear it before running any query. Otherwise, you may get wrong results and then I'm going to simply run it. Now, there's some error over here, which is saying last month is incorrect and Oh, because I selected this text. I'm sorry. So let me clear it again. So do not select any text and it's been completed over here. And then you can find that over here, your formula engine is taking almost 73.7% .7 of the timing while the storage engine is just taking 26%. And in this case, you have to reduce this timing. So I'm going to go now with the variable one, which was my the better one. So I'll just copy from there and I'm just going to click at this. So let's see if I'm going to use variable. If I'm going to use variable, then how it's going to how it's going to improve the performance. Please do remember this is very, very important for you as well. Whenever you are trying to improve the performance of Dex queries, certain time you need to use a different Dex function, but it can also happen that you use hit and trial method to improve this one. So with this sense, I again clear my cache and I run it again. And here you can see that it's taking now 72.4% and 27% over here. Total timing is 58. So let's see whether we have run it or not. It runs successfully. Please do note the timing. So this is how it's gonna happen in case I made any mistake, I, although I didn't think I made any mistake. So this is with the better one. Please do remember total is 58. And if I just use bad, let me just try it again and clear the cache. And in this case, it's taking 87%. That's the difference of, you know, just using the variable. But also remember that it's not always correct that using a variable only you can optimize the performance. It can have the side effects as well. We are going to use the tabular editor basically for multiple purpose when we have to do the deployment on Power BI services or we have to edit the data model or maybe we have to just 
apply the best practices over there. We have to see, okay, whether all the best practices rules are working or not. So that's how we are going to use this tabular editor. You can pause your screen. You can read more about it if you are not known. And I'm going to show you that how you can start using it. Now, for this purpose, we are going to again have a demo. In this demo, what I'm going to do, I have already installed Tableau Editor. If you haven't installed, please either go through these exercise link over here. You can find everything. You have to use your Microsoft account, login, and you have to start the lab. In any case, you don't know, I will also provide you all the links in the description section from where you can download these different tools and also go to the exercise page directly. Now, I have already installed. Now, either once you are going to install, so you can come under the external tools and you can start utilizing from here. I'm going to open it again. File. So now you can see that my model is appearing over here and under tools. Either you can press F10 or simply run it. Basically, I have to come here. Let's try effective rules. Include a file. Download. And we are going to again try this one. Okay. And here you can see that. Now, all the different um rules whether you are you know over here you can see that what you need to be fixed for example here you see hide foreign key columns so always try to hide that one that's the best practice also under this one you can see avoid camel case one if you have to then there's a remove unused column if you are having unused column please try to remove them unless you are going to need it for example this is customer key i really need this one so i don't want to remove it so what i can do i can go over here and i can say okay generate script to fix or simply uh, click over here it's going to copy it come here and you're going to paste this one run this script and we are going to go back to that window after running it and this should not appear ideally so let's see and we can also say that okay we are going to apply the fix and certain times you can also ignore the item from there if you really don't want that so refresh it again this should be ideally fixed i'm not sure why it has not been fixed so oh maybe because i didn't save the model or something that's how that's why it's happening you have to save the model as well after applying this fix so this is the tabular editor basically it's going to help you out that you can check all the best practices or the rules whether you are following them or you are avoiding them please take it very seriously here you can see there are 17 bp issues which are these one and you need to fix them out guys now we have already seen that what are the different kinds of tools that you can use to optimize the performance of your Power BI reports. In case you have any questions or any concern, please do let us know so that we can help you out. In case you need any of Power BI training or Microsoft Fabric training or any certification trainings related to Microsoft Power BI, Microsoft Fabric, Enterprise Data Analyst, etc., please do contact us. We also provide consulting services. So if you are needing any support or any consulting services, please then contact with us. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, share this video with your friends so that they can also take advantages of this one. Till then, keep learning and I'm going to see you in the next video.